that there are approximately 30,000 foster kids in Canada. Manitoba has the highest rate in the country with 10,000 kids in care. Canada does not have a national strategy for the provision of child protection services and does not keep reliable national statistics, making it difficult to fully grasp the problem, says Marnie Brownell, a senior research scientist with the Manitoba Center for Health Policy. I really don't think we have a handle on the, the number of children in care in Canada. You can go within provincial agencies and look up their statistics, but even from province to province, they don't collect these statistics in the same way. It really does make it difficult to have a grasp on the issue, and it also makes it difficult to develop policy, because if you don't know your exact numbers, it's very hard to develop policy to react to those numbers. So why are there so many kids in care in Canada? Poverty, inadequate housing, parental mental health issues, parental addictions, those are the kind of risk factors that put a child at risk. But I think when you see the high numbers of kids in care, it suggests that the kinds of services and supports that are necessary to treat children or treat that risk of a child in their own home are lacking. So there's not the support services within the community. There's not the support services for the families. Dr. Brownell adds that the number of Indigenous kids in care is disproportionately high. In Manitoba, Indigenous children make up about 25% of the child population, yet they account for almost 90% of kids in care. We found that at a population level, over one in every five First Nations children in the province spend some time in care before their 15th birthday. And that, to me, is an absolutely astounding statistic. You know, why are there so many Indigenous children in care? There are multiple influences. Some have to do with those risk factors we were talking about that are more prevalent in some Indigenous communities. That part of the intergenerational trauma that's caused by the residential school system some researchers and Indigenous groups are also saying that there's discrimination, that some of the same behaviors or circumstances among Indigenous families that may lead to their children going into care are judged more harshly than if they were found in non-Indigenous families. And this also came out in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission that the child welfare system of today is really like an extension of the residential school system of many years ago. She worries that with so many children in care, the system will become unsustainable. It becomes more and more difficult to find enough families who can provide adequate and good care to children when there are so many children being put into care. And that's why you start to see cracks in the system like putting kids in hotels rather than having placements for them. Dr. Brownell believes Canada should consider modifying its child welfare approach. In Canada and North America in general, we have child protection policy as opposed to family welfare policy. So whenever it feels that the child is at risk, in Canada we tend to err on the side of caution and remove kids from their families. Whereas in other countries, they take what's known as a child welfare approach. So if a child is at risk, rather than removing that child from the family, they make sure the family has the support so that the child can safely stay within the family. And that approach seems to make so much more sense. High-profile cases like the one in Manitoba, where five-year-old Phoenix Sinclair was abused, then killed by her mother and stepfather after falling through the cracks of the child welfare system, can influence social workers to err on the side of caution. Sometimes policy is formed around these high-profile cases. I think it kind of sends a chill through the system, and social workers who are faced with a decision about, do I take this child into care? When they remember a case like that, the knee-jerk reaction may be, I better take this child into care, just in case. Tackling the root causes of child abuse would be more effective. You know, the system is just sort of set up to respond in terms of child protection. So government gets it on one level, but it just hasn't translated into the way services are delivered. Really, I think if more of the resources that are put into child welfare could be directed towards prevention to things like reducing poverty, improving housing, mental health services, then I think long term you would see a much better effect in terms of reducing those risks for child maltreatment. For Evidence Network, I'm Melanie Holoboski.